For today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about chroma keying or green screening. Now, as you may know, green screening is just standing in front of a screen that is green and then editing the video so that all the green gets taken out. One important thing to remember about green screening is that the colour of your screen has to be constant. It can be any colour you want, it just mustn't match any colours that are on your subject that you want to keep in. Mine is completely green because that is the standard green screen colour. You can use blue, which is another colour that's very, very common. And um, lighting is another thing that's very important in order to get a constant colour on your screen. As you can probably tell right now, this part of my face is highlighted by light because there is a window right here with natural light coming through. This means that a shadow is cast on the green screen about here but the shadow that's cast onto it isn't so bad, and the colour of the screen up here in my room is pretty constant, so all we need to do now is take that out. Now that you know what green screening is, let's go over to the editing program, in my case Apple Motion, to see how it's done. Oh, by the way, if you're not using Apple Motion, this effect will work in things like Final Cut Pro, uh, Sony Vegas, Adobe Premiere, I think it'll also work in iMovie if you know how to do it, but for me, I'm using Apple Motion because it's uh, the easiest program to do the effect in, in my opinion, which I have. So, let's go to Motion to see how it's done. Okay, so here we are in Apple Motion. I'm using Apple Motion version 5. It doesn't matter what version of Motion you use. I think all of them have the chroma key effect in them. So what we're going to do is first we're going to skim through our footage, make sure that our subject is not uh, does not go off the screen or none of his body parts uh, go out of the range of the green behind him, in which case mine looks okay. What we're going to do, first of all, before we apply the chroma key effect, is we are going to select our clip and select the Bezier Mask tool. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to draw a simple mask uh, around the areas of the green screen that our subject does not go. So that looks, that looks fine. To make it a bit simpler, you can select this and change it to the Rectangle Mask tool. I know that's even an even simpler thing to do, but this is alright for now, so we're just going to uh, make the mask a little bit better. And once we've got the mask right, we want to scrub through our timeline just to make sure that our subject does not go out of range of the mask. And yep, that looks about okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the part of the video, the frame of the video, where we want our chroma key effect to start, in which case it's 18 seconds on one frame in when I snap my fingers. Next what we're going to do is we're going to have our clip selected. We can either Usually you'd go library, filters, keying, and then keyer, and then just drag it on, or click apply. But there's an easier thing to do, if you just select your clip, go down here to the filter menu, uh, keying, and then keyer, that's just a quick way of doing it. So now as you see, the green has already been taken out, but what we want to do is we want to go to the inspector, and select sample colour to refine the key as it says. To sample the colour, it's a bit like uh, using... Uh, the, an eyedropper tool, except instead of just choosing one colour from the eyedropper tool, you're choosing a range of colours inside the box that you draw. So if we draw a box right here, which includes the shade of green and also my shadow that was cast right here, as a range of colours on it, which pretty much covers every single colour that's on the screen, and then set our view mode to composite, you can see which colours have been taken out. And we're going to refine the key by clicking on sample colour again and drawing boxes around the around the shades and colours which haven't been keyed out yet and having done just those two sample colour boxes it seems that every single bit of green has been keyed out apart from I think I can see a tiny tiny bit just above my head right there and yep all the green has been keyed out so if we switch off the keyer that's what it looked like beforehand but with all the boxes put in place and the sample colours all the green's been taken out uh, what we'll then want to do is we want to trim in our effects timeline, which is just below the viewer. We want to trim down the keyer so that it starts where our cursor is and then ends wherever you want it to end. So as you can see, our subject is completely keyed out. And if I play this footage back, that's the green screen completely gone. And after you've done all that, you can test it out and make sure there are no uh, parts of your subject which, or any parts of the green screen which are still there by 
uh, generating a checkerboard or another generator and just dropping it beneath dropping it beneath your subject just to take a look at it. Uh, I've moved the checkerboard a bit too far. Put it back. Right, you can watch the video over. And there you can see the chroma key effect has worked really well. You may need to fine tune it and change it so that right up here some of my hair has disappeared. That's probably to do with the fact that it's very, very dark brown and a lot of shadows are um, kind of in that color range. But that is how you chroma key in Apple Motion. So thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you next time with another Mac tutorial. See you then.